Katie from katienormalgirl.com and I also write as the 21st century herbalist at hellogiggles.com. Today I'm going to take you through a basic lotion making tutorial. You'll need a small pot that's been cleaned and thoroughly dried. Place it on your stove and turn the burner to its lowest heat setting. We'll begin by melting the base or carrier oils. These are oils that have been derived from the fatty portion of plants like the seeds and the nuts and they're heavier and less fragrant than essential oils. Today I'm using a combination of oils that you can find in your local grocery store or health food store. We'll start with 5 tablespoons plus a teaspoon of grapeseed oil. This is a non-greasy, fast-absorbing oil that can be found in the same aisle as the vegetable and canola oils. Next, you'll need 2 tablespoons of olive oil. I prefer extra virgin olive oil because it's the purest and least processed of the olive oils which also makes it the most expensive type of olive oil. If you want to use virgin or regular olive oil, it'll work just as well for this recipe. Next is the coconut oil, and you'll need one tablespoon. You can see that the coconut oil is still partially solid. Most vegetable oils melt at temperatures as low as 20 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas coconut oil's melting point is closer to 76, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature in your house will determine the consistency of your oil. You can use it in its solid or liquid form. It'll work great either way. And finally, we'll be adding one tablespoon of beeswax. You can get beeswax blocks from your local craft or hobby store. And if you want to use the block, you'll need to grate the wax off of the block, which can be quite labor intensive because it is pretty hard. I prefer to use these little beeswax pellets they cost just a little bit more, but in my opinion, they are so worth it. A lot easier to use. We're going to put one tablespoon of these directly in with our oils. Okay. Now that we have all of our base oils gently warming over a low heat, I'm going to give them a stir just until the beeswax is melted. This may take a few minutes, but be patient and don't turn the heat up too high because you don't want to scorch your oils. Okay, once the, all of the beeswax is melted, pour the oils into the base of your blender to cool, and next we'll heat our waters. Again, you'll need a small pot placed on the stove over low heat. Now, waters are more than just water. They also include several water-soluble ingredients, including our emulsifier. To get started, you'll need half a cup of distilled water. You'll want to use distilled water because the distillation process makes it the purest form of water you can buy. Tap water can contain elements like fluoride and chlorine that degrade the quality of your lotion. Some bottled and spring waters are supplemented with vitamins and ion for flavor, which also can degrade your lotion. Either of these forms of water can contain microscopic particles that can lead to mold formation in your lotion, so stick with the distilled water, which you can buy in your grocery store. Next, you'll need one tablespoon of aloe vera gel. This is not the aloe vera gel that you find in the sun care aisle. This is pure aloe vera gel without additional ingredients. You can visit my website, katienormalgirl.com, for a detailed picture tutorial on how to harvest fresh aloe vera gel from the plant. Finally, you'll need an emulsifier because we are mixing together oil and water, and this will prevent them from separating. I'm using a quarter of a teaspoon of desert salt or sodium borate which are just fancy names for cosmetic grade borax. Cosmetic grade borax does not contain chem uh, chemicals, surfactants, cleaning agents, or stabilizers, so it is safe for your skin. You're gonna wanna heat the waters over low heat, stirring until the borax dissolves. This will take just a few minutes over low heat. Once the borax is dissolved, you're gonna wanna remove the pot from the heat and allow the waters to cool. You know the oils are ready when they turn an opaque color, but are still soft. This took about 10 minutes, but depending on the temperature in your house, it can take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes. I've transferred my waters to a measuring cup that has a pour spout on it, because you'll need to add the water in a slow and steady stream. After adding the water, you can then add in any essential oils. In this case, I'm going to be using a jasmine oil and a vitamin E oil, about five to six drops of each. If you can't find vitamin E oil in a bottle like this, you can buy the capsules and pierce one and then just squeeze the contents in. You're gonna to wanna to take the center out of your blender lid and set that aside. Place your lid on top. 
And once I get my blender started here, I'm going to want to initially have this open hole covered with my hand because the plates are going to kick up all of these oils that are inside and you don't want that all over your counters and walls. So now I'm going to turn my blender on low and then slowly begin to pour my water into the vortex that's formed in the oils. Then I'll add in my essential oils and blend until all the oils are incorporated. Okay, that's it. You've just made lotion. You can go ahead and pour it into your favorite container and enjoy. And thank you very much for joining me today for this lotion making tutorial. And you can always visit my website, katienormalgirl.com for more body care recipes or visit me at hellogiggles.com where I write as the 21st century herbalist.